Alrighty guys, so I was asked to do number 29 and 31 from the semester review, so <clears throat> that's what I'm going to follow up with right now. So you're given a function, f of x is x squared minus x over x minus 1, and you're told that x cannot be equal to 1. Why? Because we know if we plug in a 1 down here, we have a 0 in the denominator, and that's bad. So <clears throat> we have to find a way around this. All right, We need to figure out what value of x can we use to make this function continuous. So I wanted to remind you, because this is super important, of the definition of what a continuous function is, continuity, right? Number one, the limit has to exist at some point. So remember we had graphs, right? And we'd say, oh, the limit from the left has to equal the limit to the right. And if they're the same value, then the limit exists, right? So in this case here at this point A, the limit does exist because they're going to the same height. The other criterion was is that the, the function had to be defined at that point, and it is, okay? And then the third one was is that the limit of the function at that point has to equal the function defined at that point. So it, it's true, right? The limit is the same as, the, as f of a in this case here. So that's the definition of what it means for a function to be continuous. So what you need to do is just take a limit, all right? So you take the limit as x approaches 1. And the key is whenever you have a rational expression, right, meaning a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator, then what you want to do is try and factor it so you can get rid of something. So right now, this function has a hole, and I'll go ahead and graph it while I'm talking. This function has a hole in it at x is equal to 1, or an asymptote maybe, or something like that. So if I graph it, just to get a look at what this thing looks like, um, I'm going to have x minus 1 downstairs, right? And let me put my parentheses right because if we don't, then there's a problem. So I'm putting this function in just like this, all right? Uh, parentheses on top, x squared minus x over x minus 1. And if I graph this function, well, you can't really see it 1, but if I zoom into x is equal to 1, oh, here trace 1, zoom in. x squared minus x over x minus 1. Why isn't it graphing for me? Zoom 6. So anyway, it's really, this is not, I don't know what's going on. Oh, my mode. I know I'm in radian mode. I'm okay there. But anyway, you can't tell, but there's going to be a hole there. All right? How do I know? Because if I factor the top, I see I can remove this discontinuity. This is a removable discontinuity here at x is equal to 1. It's just really super hard to see um, on the calculator. So what I did was I factored on top, canceled the factor top and bottom. And so what we have now is the limit as x approaches 1 of x. Well, at this point here, I'm going to plug the 1 in here, so the answer is 1. Okay, in number 31, you're asked to find inflection points. So that means inflection points occur when the second derivative equals 0 and changes sign about the critical numbers, right? So I took two derivatives. Here's the original function, first derivative, second derivative. Set the second derivative equal to 0. I factored out a 12, so x is equal to 1, right? I plotted it on a wiggle graph, and then I want to test to the left and the right in the second derivative to see what the second derivative is doing. Well, if I plug in a 0, I get 0 times, uh, sorry, 0 times 12 is 0, minus 12 is a negative 12. So this value is negatively valued, and so I know the second derivative is negative from negative infinity to 1. And if I choose a 2 to the right of 1, and I plug that in, I'm going to have 24 minus 12, which is a positive number. So the second derivative is positive to the right of 1. So since the second derivative equals 0 at x equals to 1 and changes sign, then there's going to be a point of inflection at x equals to 1. The second case, again, I took two derivatives, set it equal to 0. So x just equals 0 here. I mean, you get 24x squared. You solve that thing. It's 0. Okay, so I put it on a wiggle graph. And I plugged in a negative 1. Well, if I plug in a negative 1 and square it, it's going to give me a positive 1. So 24 times 1 is a positive number. So the derivative is positive to the left of 0. And guess what? If I plug in a 1, a positive 1, 
you know, to the right of zero, well, I'm going to get the same number. It's still going to be positive. So since the second derivative equals zero but does not change sign, there's going to be no point of inflection at x is equal to zero. Capiche? That's it.